This is an ESP01S, one of my favourite little uh, IoT devices. It's pretty cheap, but it's pretty capable as well, especially if you upgrade the flash. So this comes as standard with one megabyte of flash. And using ESP tool and just saying uh, chip ID, please, it'll tell you that's an ESP8266. Tell you the MAC address, a few other bits and pieces, but it will say one megabyte of flash, which is fine for a lot of things. I mean, I've got one hooked up as a relay at the back here, so if I just give it 12 volts, you can see it. Uh, it's just got a blinky on there, and it's blinking every second. And uh, with this little relay module, it's quite capable to do simple tasks like that. Uh, and that's all fine. What I have been doing, though, is experimenting over the years with changing the flash out. So I just buy these chips separately. These are four megabyte flash chips, and I just desolder the original and uh, resolder. And then you can use it for things like, uh, well, I've used it for a Wi-Fi mesh. I've used it for Christmas lights and all sorts of other things, and it's uh, it works beautifully. So that's a pretty cheap, cheap and easy upgrade. But what happens if we go one step further? These are similar chips, but they are, uh, well, if that's four meg megabytes, these are four times the size. These are 16 megabytes. Now, rumor has it that you can't actually access more than four megabytes of RAM using the original chip. So what happens if we swap this out and try it? Well, it, it could not work at all. It might recognize it as four megabytes. It might go back to one megabytes. It might say 16. Uh, it might become self-aware and walk off the bench. I don't really know, actually. But I'm going to desolder this one here, and I'm going to put one of these 16 megabyte chips on, and let's just see what happens. There's our patient desoldered, and there's the 25Q128FVSQ manufactured in the, I guess, second week of 2015. Uh, ready to go in and uh, you can see the mark on pin one there and it's pretty important to get that lined up with this pin one here as well uh, because <laughs> when you don't do that as I've done a few times not paying attention uh, the magic smoke will be released all right let's get this one on and then check to see what ESP tool tells us about the result brain transplant successful well until we turn the patient on and see what's going on. Moment of truth. ESP tool uh, will tell it that it is an ESP8266. And we'll just check the flash ID. And it says it is 16 megabytes. What? Okay. Well, that doesn't really tell us whether or not it's programmable to 16 megabytes. So let's go and get a blinky. And um, now from memory, if we want that relay to work, I think that's out of GPIO0. And let's go to ESP8266 boards. We'll just go to the generic one. What else can we change here? Upload speed looks good. Crystal frequency. Ah, flash size. So we want to go to 16 megabytes. Anything else we need to do? Um, I don't think so. I think that should be okay. Maybe we should actually clear the flash. So is there a way of doing that? Um, yeah, arrays flash. Oh, that's already set for standard. Okay. So I'll just pull this out and put it back in again. Although it should be okay. And then we'll just go, let's upload. Hmm. Yeah, so it's one thing to recognize that it's 16 megabytes. Whether or not it can actually uh, flash onto that or not. Okay, so it says it's connected and it's uploading. That's a good sign. Uh, I did ask it to erase all of the flash contents, which will take a while um, and then I guess yeah we could test it to see if that is working for the relay and if that is fine I guess the next thing to do would be to 
maybe load up something like the W LED software, you know, for the Christmas lights, which we've seen before. Whoa, well, here we go. So 36.3 seconds to erase. And then it's actually programmed it. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's um, let's check to see that that is actually working for the relay. And, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's unexpected but terrific. There's our 128 in there, which is the 16 megabyte chip. Program just to blink. Let's try it and give it some power. Uh, 12 volts. Yes. Oh, that's so good. So good. All right, so I'll take it back upstairs again and we'll try and put uh, WLED in there. Um, but, um, yeah, that's a pretty cool result. Nice one. I've downloaded the WLED binary, and I'll just copy from the website here the actual uh, command line. And I think I've just called it WLED. Yep, there it is. All right, so let's see if it's going to upload. Um, probably should have told it that's an ESP8266. It says detecting chip type unsupported detection protocol, but it seems to be uploading fine. Um, yeah, I'd say that that is working pretty well. So what's the purpose of having a 16 megabyte ESP01S? Probably something along the lines of being able to make sure that uh, if you're saving a lot of, in the case of WLED, there's a lot, a lot of different light um, settings that you can save. So you can just keep adding to it, knowing that you're not going to run out of space on the device itself, which is pretty cool. You could also partition part of it and have, um, you could save data to, for instance, a little FS file system or something like that. Um, that looks good. Uh, yeah, so it just gives you a, a few more options for uh, using this little thing. And it's a cheap upgrade. The, the device itself is pretty cheap, around $1, $30, $40, uh, depending on where you get it from. And uh, the upgrade chips are about the same. So for yeah, under $3, uh, that is a pretty good option uh, for um, increasing the size of the flash without having to uh, you know, buy a more expensive option. Yeah, so this little guy continues to impress me and I'm going to call it, I'm going to say that's the circuit working for this week. We'll see you next time.